Okay, so the biggest the biggest issue that we usually have with communicator is you look you look in communicator and you get the red X in the you know up in, up in the top right corner showing that it's, it's not connected and you know they can't see status of anybody they can't check their voicemail. So I was working on you know a list and stuff of of basic troubleshooting options and the first thing we want to do is we want to go to our options. So in communicator you're going to go to the orange logo and go to options and it'll open up your options window. And if you go to your telephony window here, which is what you see on the screen, we have a server name and a username. And this is pretty much telling us is, are we pointing the, the communicator at the DNS name or the IP address of our short tail server? Because that's obviously the key. If we're not connecting, we might not, you know, we might have had a typo. A lot of time with customers that have ECC, sometimes they'll put in the ECC IP address, the back, you know, the, they'll, they'll confuse the, the ECC server IP address and the short tail server IP. So... The, the biggest recommendation I do here, I recommend here, is to do DNS name. You know, if you create a DNS name called Shortel and then you just haven't put Shortel in here, if we ever need to migrate your server, um, change IPs, anything like that, we simply update a DNS entry. If it's static IPs on everybody's PC and we need to change that IP because we're migrating networks or building a new VLAN uh, for your server, every single user's PC is going to have to be manually go, you know, went to on the, this telephony tab and updating that IP address. So. I really recommend DNS names there, and we can simply repoint that DNS to a new IP address if needed. So then you have your, your username here. We can obviously check the username against their the Shortel Director um, account to verify that's correct. This, if we do change the username, it will it will prompt them that they need to uh, exit Communicator and relaunch it for it to reauthenticate with that username, and it'll ask them for the Communicator password at that you know at that stage. So that's the first thing is making sure server name matches, and then username and password. If you if they're not sure what the password is, you simply log into their user account and director and just reset it. Um, the only thing that password gives them access to is logging into communicator, and if they have admin rights to director, logging into director. So, you know, I usually just set it back to, if I have a standard password that I use, you know, or short does default is change me, you know, setting it to something and letting them know what that is so that they can, you know, rechange this exit the application, relaunch the application, and it'll, it'll attempt to log in with the, you know, with the, the, the updated username and password. Okay. Um, oh, go back. Sorry, I, I forgot I didn't have a slide there. Go back one more. Okay. So the next thing we can do is if we've tried the username, you know, and server name, is we want to make sure we can ping the server or DNS name of the server because sometimes we have everything right and the PCs in – a wireless you know, VLAN that doesn't have access to the short tail network. So we want to verify from their PC that we can ping the DNS name or IP address of the short tail server and verify at least we have basic connectivity between their laptop or their desktop and the and our short tail server. The next step we would do is we can ping it. You know, let's let's test out another user. So let's change the username from the end users to your name. You know, so I put, you know, my, so I put C Mitchell in there if I'm troubleshooting an issue and let's just try to get my communicator account working on their PC. That way we know we can, we're trying to track down, is it a, is it a user profile issue or is it a PC, you know, is it a PC issue? So try that out, exit communicator, relaunch communicator with your username and it should come up, ask you for your communicator password and you can set it up and, and verify that it does work against your user account. If it if it does work uh, on the user account, your user account on that computer, then what we want to do is we want to take that user's user account and try it on another computer. This will tell us that is are we having a database issue in Shortel? No matter what computer they try to log into, are we is it going to fail, or do we have a, a possible uh, profile corruption on the Windows uh, PC that they're using? So have that user you know change the username onto another laptop or a test you know laptop you have for IT. And verify that they can if they can use communicator on a different computer if they can work the lot of time I've seen is uh, creating a new Windows profile uh, for that user backing you know backing everything you have on the desktop um, blowing away their user profile and recreating their user their, their user profile inside of Windows will clear any of the uh, you know issues that we're having you can also go into the registry and just you know and try to clear out some of the short little stuff in most cases it's easier just to uh, to create a new Windows profile, you know, for the user if we're, you know, we're having major issues like that. The next thing we could try is obviously we want to, you know, try restarting the computer. If you're exiting Communicator, relaunching it, it, it's pretty close to doing the same thing unless we have some of the other Tappy installers or Outlook, you know, plugins stuff that could be causing us some problems. 
but you know, so we'll always recommend to restart the computer. You know, if we've tried exiting Communicator and everything, just if it was working and it just automatically, you know, all of a sudden stopped working, let's restart the computer. If it never worked from the beginning, restarting is probably not going to, you know, to check anything. Once we've done that, we can open up that support and debugging that we talked about and look at our server status and our CAS statuses. And let's see, okay, are we getting basic connectivity, uh, you know, inside the communicator software at all? Are we just having a connect? Is the software actually working, but we're, we're getting the error because it's it's not able to connect and control the phone? And, you know, in that, in that status and stuff, we'll be able to see the phone status. And if it has, you know, if the IP addresses and everything are right inside of the, uh, the server status and CAS statuses to see if we're not, um, if we're having a lot of issues with a lot of people, you know, um, having a similar issue in communicator, you know, it could be that we need to restart um, our CSIS service on our server, which controls all the communicator logins in that status is, is going to show you that's not connected. And if you have multiple computers that are all doing the same thing, it's probably an IIS issue on the on the server. So we can restart the, the CSIS service on the server. And usually that'll correct all the, you know, allow all the communicators to, to log back in once, you know, once that service restarts in about, you know, 20, 30 seconds. If none of that works, we want to uninstall and reinstall communicator. This will replace any, you know, any of the basic files that need to be, you know, updated or, or checked against. We can obviously go backwards a version, or if you have a, if you're, if you're not running the latest version, you can go forward and, and install the latest version of, of communicator in this case. And, you know, a lot of times that will correct it. If it still doesn't correct it, our last step is the least fun step is to uninstall the communicator and then to manually delete the communicator folders and to wipe everything in from the registry that's that list uh, uh, shoreware or shortel and that'll completely uninstall everything because when we do a basic uninstall it's going to leave the entries in the registry so for some reason if some of those entries in, in the registry are incorrect the only way to wipe those is to you know manually lo you know run sh look for shoreware or shortel in the registry delete those folders and then go ahead and reboot the computer and install and reinstall the software, which will do a, a complete fresh install because it doesn't have any of the the old uh, entries in the registry or in the uh, program files.